going on YouTube, it is just my opinion, and I am back. Sorry, it's been a little bit. Uh, I've had a stressful past couple months, but I'm here today to give you a review. This review is going to be of The Beatles, Abbey Road, celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. They just released a new mastered edition. I figure, why not review this? The Beatles I've reviewed in the past before. If you don't know The Beatles, I'm sorry. Uh... What are you doing? One of the most famous rock bands of all time in which they dominated the 60s, started off as just a pop rock group that began experimenting more and more with each album as far as psychedelic rock and other instrumentations. This particular album is their second to last album ever put out together, which it should have been their last album put out together. Let It Be, which was their official last one, was a bit choppy, used a lot of pre-recorded sessions but this was their last album where they were all recorded together. There was a lot of tension during this time period between the band members. But somehow with this album, it came all together really, really well. And it's only fitting the album starts with the song Come Together. This is my favorite song from this album by far. This one was sung by John Lennon. It has some kind of goofy lyrics in there but it's very catchy hits very hard right from the get-go just comes right in very memorable intro it's composed brilliantly and i love how on this one every instrument within the song kind of gets its own turn to shine there's great bass in there uh, i love the little drum breakdowns some nice very bluesy pianos and guitars and a great guitar solo uh, by George Harrison on this one. You then get Something, which is a classic, timeless, woozy love song, and this one was constructed by George Harrison, one of his most memorable and well-put-together uh, songs of all time from the group. Vocals match perfectly with the instrumentation. The guitars on this are absolutely beautiful. Uh, has some nice bluesy elements in there as well. We then get Maxwell's Silver Hammer, which has a lighter tone to it. It's one of the sillier songs that the, the group has constructed over the years, and it's put together by Paul. He's the lead vocalist on this one. It's actually kind of weird because it sounds so silly and clunky, but the lyrics are actually about this doctor who's going around killing people with his hammer. We then get Oh Darling, which is another great song off of this, in which it has kind of this doo y blues and soul type vibe to it. And Paul McCartney is singing on this one. He does a fantastic job on the vocals on this one. I've never really heard him sing like this with this much grit and passion. If you want to feel goosebumps, listen to the, listen to his vocals on this one. The guitars are just pure rock, but the background vocals, the pianos added in there just add this sweet soul element. Everything was put together very, very well for this song. We then get Octopus's Garden, which uh, another silly, fun song, uh, kind of quirky song. It's sung by Ringo, which is the drummer. Not that any of them are, are, are bad vocalists in any way, but out of all of them, he's easily the weakest, and he doesn't really have that many sung songs uh, throughout the discography. Normally, they're just kind of silly, fun songs that he kind of constructs, but this one is actually sung pretty well by him. I think uh, he should get a lot of credit for the way that he sang on this one. I thought the guitars, again, sounded absolutely beautiful and fantastic by George Harrison. I think George Harrison really did an amazing job throughout this entire album as far as the guitars goes. We then get I Want You, She's So Heavy, which is definitely a standout track of mine on the album. Constructed absolutely great. I love how it goes from this kind of sleek, smooth production sound and style uh, with John singing. It kind of rolls over and switches up into like this heavy, heavy sounding track. This just crazy white noise building up and up. It kind of makes you go from like La La Land getting like snapped right back into reality. It's just amazing the way that this song builds up. We then get Here Comes the Sun, which is another standout track of mine on the album. This is another timeless classic love song by George Harrison. Again, one of his more memorable, one of his better constructed songs that he did for the group. Again, it's nice and light, pop friendly. It's just a feel good song, but while still fitting in and experimenting with the album with uh, nice acoustic guitars and Moog synthesizer. Uh, if this song does not just make you feel better or, or brighten your day in any sort of way, I'm convinced you don't have a soul 
if this doesn't help boost your mood up while listening to it. We then get Because, again, another beautifully constructed song, another standout of mine. It has a very uh, psychedelic, hypnotic type feel to it. With the instrumentation, it's mostly just a harpsichord and mood synthesizer kind of layered together, but what really makes the song stand out is just the, the vocal performance, the, the harmonies throughout the entire song. The way that this was constructed, so George, John, and Paul are all singing on this song together simultaneously harmonizing, stacked up their vocals uh, all together, not once, twice, but three times. So you're hearing nine different vocal tracks throughout this entire song, which is absolutely outstanding. We then get You Never Give Me Your Money, which uh, is the first of, of a bunch of songs that follow. It's like a nine song medley type thing that they were doing at, starting at this point during the album. This one was one of the stronger songs within the medley. It's about four minutes long, but it breaks down a couple different times and switches up a few different times that it almost feels like its own little medley, primarily sung by Paul. It goes from like this piano ballad to like a rock opera type sound to then just like straight rock towards the end of the song. And the way that it all transitioned together sounded great. We then get Sung King, which is another smooth jazzy track in which the guitars swell absolutely beautifully on this one. And on this one again, they kind of do the triple stacking of the vocal performances again. And this sounds again very hypnotizing, uh, very well done. At a certain point in the song, they're all singing in Spanish, which sounds straight fire, muy caliente. Then you get Me, Mr. Mustard, which is kind of a silly song. It doesn't really last very long. Not really a big fan of this one. It doesn't really transition smoothly either from Sung King, in which, speaking of transitioning smoothly, again, uh, Polythene Pam comes right after this, which is not the best transition again either. Wasn't really a fan of this song either. Mostly for John Lennon's vocal performance. I don't know, I just didn't like it. It was kind of getting sloppy towards this part uh, part of the album. But she came in through the bathroom window I thought was better. It was transitioned much smoother. Kind of felt like it was actually transitioning from the last song into this one. And I just, I like Paul's vocals performances on this one better too. We then get Golden Slumbers, Carry That Weight, and The End, which is all kind of its own one little medley, which is probably the best medley throughout the entire medley section of the album. Uh, starts out very nicely with Golden Slumbers, very gentle and soft, and Paul's vocals are absolutely great with some great orchestrals and pianos in there. It transitions right into Carry That Weight, which I thought was great transitioning wise. It transitions into the end where the tempo just picks up. It just becomes really, really heavy and fun. And they all get their own little solos. They all trade off doing guitar solos. Ringo gets his own little drum breakdown to begin the song off. Uh, the, the guitars on this are absolutely amazing. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you think that it's building and building and building, it just stops and it softens after the building chaos and it ends the medley off. It ends with that last little line in the end. Sounds absolutely great. Should have been the last of which we heard from the group in general. Great way to have ended their career with this little medley and that little uh, section at the end. I think kind of just personified them immensely. But instead we get like this weird kind of like hidden track, Her Majesty, which is like a 30 second little sung acoustic thing. It shouldn't have, it should have just ended with, with the end and it would have been great on its own. So in conclusion, although this is not my, my favorite Beatles album of all time, there's no doubt in my mind that this is a classic album for one, one of the most iconic album covers of all time. This is the last time in which the group all came together and worked together. Uh, and did a fantastic job. The music itself is just undeniable and timeless. Masterfully produced. Should be giving a lot of credit to almost the unsung fifth member of the group, George Martin, who handled a lot of the behind the scenes production. Uh, kind of kept the group in check for this album. Anytime I'm reviewing the Beatles, there's always a little bit of sentimental value. Uh, as I grew up pretty much on the Beatles. Some of the first music that I ever heard was the Beatles growing up as far as like real actual music. I know it's probably a lot of people's, but it's it's also my mom's favorite uh, album by them. So, love you mom. Now the, the remastered version 
uh, gives kind of a little bit different of a listening experience for the album. Definitely amplifies and you kind of catch certain things that they were going for in the production and the sound that you wouldn't have heard before. I know that it may have pissed some people off as far as re-releasing it and kind of putting it out in this remastered style, but I think it sounds great. I think it sounds fantastic. I don't think it takes away from this being a classic and, and the album that it is in general. Uh, overall, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Remember, this is just my opinion, and thank you for watching YouTube.